Welcome to episode eight of Many Roads Traveled. And funny enough, we are going to be going to our eighth country on this trip. Egypt. Yes, that's right. We're finally hitting Africa. <laughs> woo woo. So we've been on the road for about seven weeks now and have covered about 5,600 miles. This episode will be covering another 540. Also coming up on this episode will be, yes, in Sinai, uh, Egypt. So we'll be going to Nueva, Dahab, the Blue Hole, St. Catherine's Monastery, and climbing Mount Sinai, a.k.a. Mount Moses. So uh, lots of exciting things coming up. <laughs> And then for my review of the day, for me to give you a shout out on the podcast, um, yeah, just go to my website, manyroadstravel.com, and uh, there's instructions how to do that. But if you're on Apple, it's super easy. That'd be great. And uh, I really appreciate it. Okay, so the review of the week is from Sweet. <laughs> it's five stars. It says, an amazingly crazy woman whatever <laughs> i had the privilege of meeting and living with tamara back in the 90s and can't wait to hear more and that is from my good friend sam so cheers sammy okay so let's crack on and pick up where we left off so we um we got the ferry from jordan akaba to nueva egypt so nueva is it's very very small <laughs> And it's uh, in between kind of the Sinai, you know, rugged desert mountains and the Gulf of Aqaba. So it took about four hours on the ferry. And on the ferry, we met a lovely Egyptian family and we played cards with them and they taught us a new card game. And we also met two British guys, uh, Richard and Duncan. And uh, so once we docked, we, uh, well, so once we got to know about, we just, hooked up with those guys and we went to find somewhere to stay and even now i think not a lot has changed in Nueva. Uh, but remember this is 1993 and i was uh, at this point still traveling with my friend casey who i left with so so yeah so the four of us went to it was called white palace camp and like i said i just looked at it and it's still there <laughs> it doesn't look like it's changed at all in 27 years <laughs> except for now it's hostel white camp hostel instead of camp but it was great it was only uh we'd also exchanged some money so at the time it was three and a half egyptian pounds to one u.s dollar and today so september 9th 2020 it is just over 15 egyptian pounds to the dollar okay so yes we finally finally get to africa super exciting although to be honest at the time it, <laughs> it didn't really feel like i was in africa because it still felt much more middle eastern but we were happy we made it after like i said almost seven weeks so yes we found our um our little beach hut so they're thatched huts and there's pretty much they're all the same <laughs> uh, but i think we got ours for five egyptian pounds a night each so not even two dollars a night but they were like 20 meters from the water super chilled um and each each of the huts like had their own restaurant so you just kind of picked which one like i said they're pretty similar but it was just so nice to a be back be in Africa finally but also to be on the beach and it was hot so like you could get down to shorts and the first day I even got down to my bikini and went a little too crazy <laughs> didn't put the suntan lotion on properly and kind of left that day being like a Canadian flag red and white <laughs> so I really burnt like the top of my thighs and just half my stomach and my chest my chest was really burnt so not sensible make sure you get the old sun factor up high for uh the beaches especially in africa uh yeah so on that first day so that's i think this is day 47 of the trip and um, casey and i taught duncan and richard how to play euchre see this is why cards are very important to bring even now <laughs> grabbed uh, a pizza because we hadn't even eaten all day so i think probably about had a really good pizza and then we decided, oh, well, let's go try and find a beer. Well, I'm not sure if it's still the same now, but 
there was only pretty much one place you could get beer in Nueva. And you had to walk about 15 minutes down the beach, cross a couple fences, <laughs> go to this uh, like bigger kind of a hotel-ish, but uh, and it's, kind of, it's on the Bedouin. Because basically Nueva is made up or was made up of two Bedouin uh, tribes. And then it, like a little village and then the port was built there in the 80s. So we get to this place because like I said, you had, not many of them were licensed, but it was like 10 and a half Egyptian pounds. So, you know, twice the price of our night's accommodation for one beer. So I don't, I think we had one and then we just, but we stayed there for a few hours and played cards. Next couple of days really just were spent doing nothing. <laughs> Although we did, we did read some snorkeling gear and went snorkeling one day, which was really cool because the water was pretty shallow but uh, there's still lots of coral and tropical fish so that was pretty cool but most of the day was spent playing backgammon chess cards eating drinking sleeping <laughs> which was quite nice especially when you know when you're going fast traveling pretty fast which we were we did have a couple little stuff like marmors but that was a while so it's really nice to find summer a cheap <laughs> b super chilled and relaxed and just you know rest your body your mind for a few days that is ideally how i'd like to travel like it's called like travel slow i guess nowadays so after so i think day 50 we decided to leave nueva and catch a bus to dahab which is further along <clears throat> so that's about only about eight dahab's only about 80 kilometers north of sharm el sheikh and sharm el sheikh's the biggest like most well-known um beach resort I guess in Egypt so Dahab also is very chilled <laughs> it is bigger and livelier than Nueva like Nueva even now Nueva is super super chilled not a lot to do there although nowadays the, it looks like they do have some more hotels and stuff because when we were there it was literally just thatched huts so on our way to get the bus to Dahab of course you know they told us this is where you get the bus at three o'clock like just on some road like the main road kind of thing and we bumped into this dutch couple really nice dutch couple that we had met in petra jordan uh, maria and hank if someone said oh those the, the bus doesn't stop here <laughs> so the four of us found another person and then we just rented a taxi to get to dahab because it's only an hour away so we get to Dahab and we found a place to stay and it was only four egyptian pounds so it was actually even cheaper than Nueva. and again same kind of deal there was um like I said, it was bigger and there's like more uh, restaurants and cafes and shops and stuff, but super chilled still. So that first night we decided to, to go to um, like the one of the Bedouins towns, I guess. Um, and that had a, a, a disco. It, it was called the Black Prince Disco. <laughs> so we went there and uh, yeah, beer was only uh, five or six and a half Egyptian pounds, I think, per beer. So and that was a liter bottle of Stella, so that's not too bad. So yeah, we went with the Dutch couple, and we had a few boogies and a couple of beers. And it was just, crazy. it was just really crazy. Like, okay, we're partying kind of in the desert with some Bedouins. <laughs> it was really cool. And then the next day, so this is about day fifty-one. Um, and it was really cool because now we're meeting more travelers, and it's super chill. So yeah. Casey and I would be off on our own, doing our own things with other people. Like I hung out with the Dutch couple quite a bit and Casey hung out with um, Duncan uh, quite a lot. I mean, we all got along all great kind of thing, but you know, it was nice to just do, go off and do our own things with different people. So Casey, ha so it was, sorry, so day 51, I had my very first ever joint. <laughs> So I was 23 at the time. Never even smoked a cigarette at that point. Casey Duncan had bought some a few days before, and I just was like, nah, nah, nah. But then finally, I was like, okay, I'm kind of bored of them doing it, and I'm not doing it. And this whole trip was about new experiences. So I finally tried it. Didn't get stoned, but it was it tasted a lot better than I thought. <laughs> and I really haven't looked back since. <laughs> and... You know, talk about times changing. I mean, now in Canada, everyone could grow, well, in Ontario, my province, yeah, you grow four plants in your backyard legally now, and it's legal to buy, so, which is about bloody time, because marijuana has amazing uh, medicinal problems, as well as just chilling you out. <laughs> 
Uh, so it definitely helps with my medical stuff with pain and stuff like that. Okay. So yeah, so that was my big thing. I had my first joint in Dahab, Egypt. And if you know Dahab, it is the perfect place to have your first one. But again, we just spent a few days chilling there. Uh, just getting to know people, played a lot of chess, backgammon, cards, eating, drinking. Oh, they had this awesome drink called Salab. And it's uh, it's like a milky drink. And <clears throat> there's nuts and raisins and spices and coconut in there. God, it's so good. I drank at least a couple of those a day. And lots of cups of tea. It's Egyptian tea. Get, um, get them in these wee little glasses. They're cute. Just a quick sponsor break. So if you're looking for a website, build a mobile app, webinars, email autoresponders, basically you name it, this all-in-one marketing platform has got it. I've been using it myself for almost four years and it rocks and I've managed to get you a sweet deal. So for just $1, which is also guaranteed, <laughs> uh, for 30 days, you can try it out for a buck, basically. It's awesome. So get on over to manyroadstravel.com forward slash website and check it out. Honestly, you're going to be blown away with the value you get. Okay, back to the show. So on day 55, we decided to go to the Blue Hole, which is only about eight kilometers north of Dahab. And it's very famous around the world, especially free diving, but scuba diving as well and snorkeling it's crazy because it's really like it's quite shallow for about 15 feet and then all of a sudden it just drops like to like it's like you know to your knees and then it drops 20 feet boom and i guess that's called the saddle and then it then drops further 85 feet and then there's this long tunnel that's uh, called the arch so this is underwater kind of tunnel and i guess the ceiling is about a hundred and 81 feet and then the bottom it's that's the 328 feet or something like that but then along the sea side like the seaward side of the floor it drops like sharply to 3300 feet <laughs> uh, so i guess it's one of the, yeah, the most famous places for free diving and free diving is when they just go like no equipment they just hold their breath to see how deep they can get but sadly it is also has the most fatalities in the world like for a diving site 130 to 200 people died being trying to do this uh, just in the last few years so make sure you're if you're going to do that you know what you're doing <laughs> because uh yeah but it is it's it's super beautiful and there so we we went it was really cold and windy we went which kind of sucked but we did still spend almost an hour in there snorkeling and it's amazing like the coral was brilliant um lots of different colors and then loads and loads of fish so that was a really really cool day i think nowadays it costs five us dollars but then if you want to do like lots of there's loads of different, I think like 50 different dive places, right? So depending on what you want to do, free diving, scuba diving, snorkeling, they have packages. So I think they go to kind of go from everywhere from like 30 bucks to like US to, I don't know, 200. So just check it out if that's what you want to do. Of course, whenever COVID <laughs> ever ends, because Egypt is, uh, like most countries, closed right now. So just always check your, you know, country's travel advisory about what's open and if you can go. Uh, yeah, so day 55, that was the blue hole, which was, like I said, very well worth it. Because, um, like I said, you have all these rugged the cliffs and the desert uh, mountains in the background, and it's very, very lovely. So the next day... Me, Casey, and Duncan left Dahab, sadly. <laughs> but <laughs> we're like, okay, we could, you could definitely <laughs> lose track of weeks there easily. So on our way, we decided we wanted to go to St. Catherine's Monastery, which is right at the foot of Mount Sinai. So again, we're told, okay, the bus leaves at uh, noon from this area. So we got to pick up, uh, like pick up taxis, like pick up trucks, but they were taxis. So we all, we humped to the back of that, got to the bus station, get there, find out, no, it's Sunday, so <laughs> no buses, <laughs> of course. So then we, we got a couple of other, two more British guys, actually, to just to share a taxi to go to St. Catherine's because it wasn't, it's not too far. Well, just before we got on that, I was like, 
Casey, where's the green bag? Which like that was kind of like our day bag, but it had my camera in it. And of course, remember, he's already lost his camera back in Greece, uh, the ferry. So there's only my camera. It was a good back then, you know, like it's good Canon camera with 300 mil zoom lens, you know, and that's, I'd been taking all the pictures for the whole trip. And he's like, oh my God, I think I left it in the last pickup taxi. I'm like, that's the closest of this trip so far that A, I almost killed him, and B, that I almost cried because that's all our memories. Like that's everything I was on that camera. So I lost my shit, <laughs> I have to say, which is one of the first times I really lost it, especially on him. Um, and he was just like, oh my God, okay, okay. So we, you know, we decided to go to the police station. Like, okay, let's just go to the police station first. So me and Duncan was with us. Like everyone's like frantic trying to find my care, like the, the bag with my camera in it. Thankfully, see, kind, kind Muslims, the driver had taken the bag with all its contents uh to the police station and it was there oh wow sigh huge sigh of relief and casey got to live <laughs> so thank you driver whoever you are because that would have been worth a lot of money especially you know to a bedouin or you know local person so very 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 grateful and thankful that uh, he turned that in anyway so we then could take off in another taxi to get to saint catherine's okay so saint catherine's monastery it is actually the oldest consistently like inhabited christian monastery in the whole world and it was built uh between 527 and 565 a.d at the foot of mount sinai and this is this is where they believe that Moses spoke to God via the burning bush. It's so disputed if that's where it is, but that's where, but well, that's why it was built there, because apparently that's where the burning bush was seen by Moses. And so it's a very Mount Sinai, aka Mount Moses. It's a, you know it's a super holy place for Christians, Jewish people, and Muslim people. So all three, so all three of them believe that's where on Mount Sinai. Uh, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. All three religions believe that's definitely where it happened. So we get to the monastery and we go, th at the time there used to be like a used hostel at the, at Saint, just outside the monastery. But they were like, oh, 25 Egyptian pounds a night. We're like, no way. So we happened to find the only other place at the time that you could stay there, which was just like this huge Bedouin tent. And it was only six and a half uh, Egyptian pounds just to sleep in your sleeping bag in that tent. So that's what we opted for. And the Dutch couple were there. So that was nice. And because they were super organized, <laughs> a little bit more on the ball than me and Casey. So we asked that, you know, we wanted to do the sunrise from Mount Sinai. So that means you have to get up at three in the morning. So I asked Mario, I was like, can you please wake me or wake us up? Because I know what we're like. <laughs> So they're like, yeah, of course, sure. They were like, they were. I used to call them the Dutch Barbie and Ken couple because they're very good looking. And she was blonde, he was dark, and um, they're both tall. Dutch are very tall people. Yeah, I, like I said, I I hung out with them quite a lot, especially. Yeah, so three o'clock rolls around. It lit it took like all of my energy and strength to get out of bed because it's really you know you're in the desert. It's quite. And this was still March, so it was still, it's quite cold. Like I had five layers on when we left. So we were left by quarter after three. I was up and we were up and ready. And then it took about half an hour from where we were staying to get to St. to get to the monastery actually. And then it took us about two and a half hours to uh, climb Mount Sinai, like up the camel path. And it comes to Elijah's Basin. And then it's another 750 meter or 750 steps to get to the very top. It was pretty hard going. <laughs> there was many, you know, it's pitch black, cold. Uh, yeah, there was a few times where I'm like, screw this. <laughs> but I persevered and it was a huge sense of accomplishment to get to the top. I got to the top about 15 minutes before the sunrise. And wow, it was just absolutely beautiful um especially in the desert so it all you know you get the hues of reds and oranges and pinks um 
absolutely beautiful. And you could see huge, like miles and miles and miles and miles all the way around. So we just kind of, the four of us just chilled up there and chatted for about an hour and a half. And then all of a sudden, this like Roman Catholic religious ceremony started taking place. So we just, you know, quietly watched them and see what they were doing. And yeah, it was, it was a super cool experience. I remember that for sure. And then we decided to come down. Uh, so yeah, there's two ways you can either go steps all the way up or like I said, to do what we did, take the camel path and then just it's 750 steps. But on the way down, we thought, oh, we'll go down a different way. Thankfully, my knees weren't as bad as they are now. <laughs> back then 3,000 steps carved into the mountain down um yeah so once we got down there but again it was beautiful beautiful views I mean I love rocked rugged mountains and and I think that was like the first mountain I'd ever climbed so that's pretty cool so we got to the bottom and went into St. the St. Catherine's Monastery and I guess they have like the descendant of the burning bush <laughs> there and also we went inside the chapel. Uh, but yeah, someone who's for, who's not religious, I, have, I did a lot of really quite amazing religious, or went to a lot of uh, re religious sites in the last few weeks. Hence why they call, you know, the Mediterranean and this part of Africa, like Afri Egypt and even Ethiopia, um, the cradle of civilization. Lots to see. Um, so yeah, well, and then... Uh, Casey and I decided that we were going to get out of there. So after we got back, we grabbed some breakfast and then, well, yeah, still morning. <laughs> you leave at three in the morning. <laughs> yeah. So then we decided we we're going to go to Cairo. So we said goodbye to everyone and that we'd see them, meet up with them in Cairo. Now back then, remember, no internet, no cell phones. So it was all, and we didn't even know where we were staying. Um, but we just said, okay, we'll, we'll meet up with you guys in Cairo somehow, somewhere we'll do it. So yes, yeah, so we got a bus to, from St. Catherine's Monastery to Cairo, which is about six hours. And then once we got on the bus, there's about four other travelers that we had met, like in New Haven to Ahab. So that was really cool. Now, like we were like, okay, we're on the traveling kind of grapevine and we're meeting people. And yeah, so that was really, really nice considering like the first six ish weeks it was just me and casey <laughs> pretty much anyway so to hear about cairo that's gonna be next thursday's episode so make sure you tune in so yeah subscribe so you don't miss um, a stop on the road with us and now it's time for tam's top tips so i would say um, tip number one for if you really want super chilled cheap nothing much to do but on a beautiful beach uh the nueva is your place to go it's not like not many people have heard about heard about it like i said sharm el sheikh is the biggest resort that's well known in that area but that's like real lot of big hotels fancy resorts and stuff like that so if that's your thing then yeah go to sharm el sheikh there's also really good diving there in the in the uh, in the red sea nueva and dahab's on the gulf of Aqaba. But yeah, if you want, yeah, because it's super chill, Nueva for sure. If you want a little bit livelier, and I mean, actually, even to be like a digital nomad or or to live somewhere, then Dahab would be your place, I would say, because they have internet now, and you know, there's still the huts on the beach, but they do have more resorts and like I said, restaurants and cafes and things like that. And of course, if you're into diving, the blue hole's right there. So. I would suggest a hub. However, for either of those places, do not book advance. I wouldn't say. I would say just go because especially if you're going to be there for a longer time, like say Dahab, then you'll be able to negotiate and bargain prices for accommodation much better than booking ahead of time. So for places like that, especially when there's a lot of places and not a lot of people that go there, then I would definitely always say book there. Yeah, tip number three is I would highly recommend doing, even though it's tough <laughs> just to get up that early, but I would really recommend climbing Mount Sinai for sunrise. Trust me, it's one of, it'll be one of the most beautiful sunrises you've ever seen. And especially if you're religious, um, yeah, it'll be even extra uh, moving, I suppose. But yeah, I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend uh, climbing Mount Sinai. And then for female travelers, again, it would be just like dress appropriately. I mean, it's okay on the beaches. 
uh, you know, and wear your bathing suits and bikinis and shorts and things. But when you're traveling in between places, you know, just the, you can find lots of cheap clothes out there, like baggy pants, trousers, or tops. You know, maybe wear t-shirts again, not tank tops or vest tops. But I felt super safe in in the Sinai, and like I said, super nice people. I mean, that guy returned my camera. Like, how awesome is that? <laughs> okay, so I guess that is a wrap for this week's episode. So again, thank you to all my listeners. You're you rock, and uh, we'll catch you next Thursday for Cairo and the pyramids. Okay, and like I said, website. Find more info, manyroadstravel.com, and leave your reviews. Okay, until next time, safe travels, one word at a time.